Oh, hi, everyone. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, for those who aren't familiar with the Artistry Institute, we're a center right think tank. I'm part of the technology shop, and my name is Sasha Moss. My focus area is intellectual property, open data, good governance issues, and digital free speech. Now, for all, I want to thank you guys for coming today. The topic of our panel is the erosion of ownership <coughs> of the digital age, what it means. And I would say this panel is interesting because we all are connected to it in a certain way. I don't know about you, but I have my cell phone right here. My computer's in front of me. If anyone owns a Kindle, I encourage you to take out your bag and raise it up at certain points when we talk about the Kindle. Because this is what the, co what the panel is essentially going to cover. It's how copyright basically affects all of our lives in ways that we don't necessarily know, understand, or can see unintended or intended consequences of the 76 acts of Britain. As a quick disclaimer, because copyright is such a complex topic, and we have a fantastic group of uh, audience members today from different fields, but all technically oriented with the content and tech community. If my panelists go too far in the weeds and start rattling off statute or case law, I'm going to uh, ask them to de-legalize it and explain it to, say, no offense to anyone here, like a five-year-old, how you'd explain it to somebody. <laughs> no offense to <laughs> No offense to anyone here. But who isn't oriented in the topic, because I think that's where copyright sometimes we get lost in the conversation. It's very high for in chat. And we need to make it base level so we can find really easy solutions to these complex problems we see every day. And that's what we strive to do at our street. So a little bit about that, I'd like to introduce our first panelist, Jason Schultz, and you'll be able to learn three minutes' time to give some of your background, your interest in the topic, and how you ended up here. Okay. Jason. Thanks. Thanks, Sasha. Um, well, thank you all for coming. Um, so part of the reason, uh, if it isn't obvious already, that uh, Aaron and I are here is that we wrote a book uh, uh, called The End of Ownership, uh, Personal Property in the Digital Economy. And Part of our interest in writing this uh, was because of the transformation I think that we all have seen around these questions of ownership, and it hasn't always been clear what's been going on, that there's this sort of sense, though, I think, that as the more your purchases become digital, um, you know, anywhere from movies and music uh, and uh, books to uh, now any kind of device that's network connected, your thermostat, your car, your Barbie doll, whatever it is, that there's something going on here and really trying to figure out what that is and then what are the kind of pros and cons of that and what are the options and should we be just kind of keeping going down this road or should we be thinking about other things that we might want to address to make sure that the benefits are maximized um, but that we don't suffer any unforeseen, uh, you know, unintended consequences that could be severe. And so in writing the book, we kind of tried to isolate um, some of the functions that ownership has traditionally done, especially when you have copyright law involved, right? So you have something like a movie or, you know, a book or something, but even now anything that has software in it, because of course software is uh, subject to copyright law, and the kind of tension between the intellectual property rights of the creator uh, or the rights holder and then the personal property rights of you as the owner of the device, if this mug were, you know, software enabled. Um, Thanks for our product placement. Right I was going to say, <laughs> it's not though, where's the chip? Right. Uh, oh. So, um, so uh, as an example to think about, uh, think about uh, ebooks, right, mm -hmm. and some of the issues that come up around traditional roles of books, and we'll probably talk more about this, but you know, the role of archives and libraries and um, people who own books, uh, whether intentional or not, is often preservation, right? You're keeping these things, um, and if you're not keeping them, yeah, sometimes you throw them away, but mostly you might give them away or, or sell them at a used bookstore or donate them to a library or a school or something else. Um, you know, often, you know, if you're traveling, there'll be a little library of people who like finished a book while they're traveling and they leave it there, right? So there's a sort of way in which the, the sort of ability to own something is also the ability to get rid of it. And how you get rid of it, whether you resell it or, you know, give it to someone or donate it, leave it to your kids, whatever you do, is sort of one of those things that we talk about uh, in the book. And we talk about that that's just something that we've always assumed happens. But what happens when it's on the Kindle app, on your phone? Right? Is it like, well, I guess, you know, maybe I can, you know, reassign my account at some point, but what if I'm, you know, in a horrible accident, or what if I lose my phone, or how does this all work? And, you know, these things are kind of getting worked out, but they're not as clear and simple and clean as it used to be when you just owned it. And that was it. It was part of your estate, and they inherited everything. They went through your house, and they took it, or you sold it, or you, you know, whatever happened, happened there. And so that's one of the key issues there. Another thing we look at um, is competition and innovation. Right, so you say, oh, well, what does that have to do with it? Well, 
a lot of the digital marketplaces kind of have come about by an assumption that we have the right to move things around, right? So eBay, right? It's like, I have something, I want to sell it. Someone wants to buy it, right? It's a whole marketplace. Um, but even like more electronic oriented marketplaces like YouTube, where if I upload something and someone wants to watch it, right? Um, but uh, there are a lot of places in the digital economy which are looking to kind of pair people, right? Peer to peer matching in some way. And to the extent that we own something and then we can transfer it to someone else, uh, that is a marketplace that enables that transaction to happen. To the extent that there are complications with that process, uh, then it's much less likely that a platform will emerge that's robust and scalable and easy. And then also, like, what are the kind of innovation possibilities, right? So, for instance, if you buy a book um, or some other device or some other thing, uh, let's say you buy, um, you know, uh, a software embedded uh, toy and you start tinkering around with it and you're like, oh wow, I can make this toy do something different. It can flip backwards or it can like work with this other toy or these three toys are now talking and dancing together. Well, copyright law might have a lot to say about that too. Um, and if it was just that you own the toy, well then there might not be a problem. But to the extent that you are licensed and that the toy and the intellectual property and the software is still controlled and owned by a copyright owner who has not given you permission, we get into a lot of complicated areas and issues that involve innovation and what you can actually do with the things you own if you have ideas about what you want to do with them. So I'll stop there. Lots to talk about. Excited to be here. Thank you. Uh, my name is Todd Dupler. I'm with the Recording Academy. The Recording Academy is the organization uh, best known for the Grammy Awards, but we're a membership <coughs> association. We represent uh, 24,000 music creators, artists, songwriters, and uh, studio professionals. Uh, so most of my comments are going to be somewhat narrowly focused on the music sector. And uh, when I think about this question, erosion of ownership, it seems like, at least in the music space, it would have been a much more interesting conversation maybe five years ago. Um, if I was commenting on it then, I, I might have used the thinking emoji. Uh, <laughs> today I would use a shruggy emoji. Um, and to kind of illustrate, in 2005, which wasn't that long ago, uh, revenue for the recorded music industry, 91% came from physical sales, 7.5% uh, came from downloads, and about 2% came from streaming. Uh, in 2010, it was then 54% um, physical sales, uh, about 40% downloads, and 7% streaming. Uh, then fast forward 2015, just last year, it's 30% physical, 35% downloads, 35% streaming. And then this year, uh, year uh, at least half year, for the first half of 2016, streaming uh, now accounts for 47% of all revenue uh, from the recorded uh, music business, 31% for downloads, and just a slim 20% for physical. And so we see a clear movement in the marketplace uh, where uh, the consumer isn't really interested in ownership, they're interested in access. And we see this in uh, the music space, uh, but we also see it in other sectors of the economy. Obviously, video with uh, Netflix and Hulu and Amazon, uh, but also um, you know transportation with um, you know Uber or Lyft or uh, you know a Zipcar or a bike share or Airbnb. Um, what we see in the marketplace is that consumers are less interested in personal ownership and they're more interested in access. So that's what we've, we're giving them. We're, we're meeting the demand and the expectation of the consumer and providing what they want. But there is an area uh, where we have seen an erosion of ownership and it isn't uh, for the consumer, it's for the creator of the copyright. Um, that as we've moved into these um, new digital business models, um, it's the property right of the person that creates the copyrighted work that's seeing their ownership interest compromised. Uh, especially in the music space, if you are a songwriter or an artist, you are subject uh, to uh, compulsory licensing, to government rate setting that are set at rates uh, below a fair market value in the marketplace. Uh, you're regulated by different agencies. Um, songwriters in particular have been fighting a long-running uh, dispute with the Department of Justice over regulations uh, that are onerous and affecting them and again suppress the value of their work beneath uh, free market. And so um, if we're talking about uh, here at R Street, you know, the free market and the ideas uh, for the free market, if, if there's a rebalancing that needs to take place in copyright law, it is to give the uh, creators of copyright uh, more control over their work in the free market so that they can get fair value for the work that they create. Uh, thank you. I'm Jonathan Band. I uh, represent 
uh, both library associations and a group called the Owners' Rights Initiative. Um, and, and both of those groups have a very you know, close interest to this issue of, of, uh, of ownership. Um, now, even though later on, you know, we'll, we'll get, yeah, we're actually, the rest of the panel is going to be talking about uh, this in the digital context, uh, I, I started... Uh,